Now, right, hello, fun, and welcome back to my Fallout 4 Mod Spotlight series, where today we are having a look at the Russian Assault Pack, which is being released by user Nova Finch. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is actually quite a bit. We don't just get one lovely new weapon, as with most mods. No, in fact, we get five gorgeous new Soviet and Russian-designed weaponry added into the Commonwealth. And not just that, we also do get a new outfit. So let's actually start with this first, as uh, it is just one singular piece, and then we'll head over there for the five different weapons. And all in all, this is a pretty nice little bit of kit. It's Personally, a bit too modern-y for my liking, but it is very nicely made. It's got a lot of good details to it, very good texturing, very good modeling, and all in all, stat-wise, is a decent outfit. As you can see, the Special Forces Fatigues will offer you 25 physical defense, as well as a 25 energy damage resist, along with a plus 2 to agility for just a mere weight of 3. So it's not exactly the most protective bit of armor ever, but being an outfit, you should be able to throw on other bits and bobs of armor on top of it, including helmets, etc. They give you a little bit more defense, but overall it is pretty good. But more importantly, it comes in a variety of color options. In fact, we get eight different colors for you to choose from, along with, of course, more tactical modifications. You get these uh, cool colors, which uh, I do like the range of things that you do get with the material modification, from the uh, standard sort of dark blue here, to a green, to another blue, to a red, to a biohazard yellow, desert, digital camo, and finally, tiger stripes, because who... Who wouldn't want that here in the Commonwealth? It's just, it's fun. I like it. Now let's go run over here real quick and take a look at the various modifications. We'll talk about how you get your hands on these once we also get to the guns, as it's basically all the same. Uh, but yeah, let's look at the modifications for the Special Forces Fatigue. And of course, the most important category is the Material category, where we have that standard Olive Drab Blue Shift, Red, Biohazard, Desert, Digital, and the tiger camo patterns. All quite nice and fun, I do enjoy them. Now next in the modification category, we have things like in inner pockets, lightweight, force compensation, etc. Pretty typical sorts of mods, but with a slightly different names than we typically get in normal vanilla armor. And just different things to add carry capacity, a little bit of extra armor, etc. And then we have the weave category, where again, it's the same sort of thing we always get uh, adding additional protection, just with new names, rather than the typical weave mark 1, 2, etc. But all in all, good armor additions. Now let's move on to the weaponry, and oh my! <laughs> Oh my, are they great. Now, I've got all the standard ones in my inventory, but here are some of the modded ones I made earlier, and they... They are beautiful. Again, we have a lot of modifications on these, including different material colors, so you can have like a gaudy golden revolver. Oh, I love it. So let's take a look at the stats that we do get on these various weapons. So into the pit boy we go to the weapon category, and we'll start with the Rex, which will deal 55 damage with a 44 round with a firing rate of 35, range of 83, accuracy of 48 for a weight of 4.1. And all in all, this gun along with all the rest are gorgeous. They are really well made, very nice modeling, very nice texturing, with a whole lot of various modifications. You can change all sorts of things from the receiver to the type of ammo you're using, a load of different sights and materials to really truly make these weapons yours. So let's quickly run through the rest of them now, and then head to the PP-19 Bison, which will do 22 damage with a 38 round with a firing rate of 127, range of 59, accuracy of 58, and a weight of 6. Then after that one, we have the SVDM Dragonoff, which will start at 48 damage with a 308 round with a firing rate of 56, range of 233, accuracy of 70, and a weight of 10.2. 
After that, we have the Sega 12, which will deal 80 damage with a shotgun shell with a firing rate of 29, range of 155, accuracy of 61, and a weight of 9. And then finally, we have the... Stachkin APS? That's probably not how you say that, but we'll roll with it. Which deals a 28 damage with a 38 round. It is an automatic pistol with a firing rate of 412, with a range of 107, accuracy of 51, and a weight of 3. And yes, like I said earlier with the Rex, loads of modifications, beautifully made, all customized weapons, which is pretty wonderful. So how do you get your hands on all of this lovely weaponry and, of course, the outfit over there? Well, you can either find them in the world. It is added into the leveled loot list, and you'll start seeing these things around level 10. But... You can also go to any chemistry station in the world, head on in, and head to the Russian Assault Pack category, where you can just, you know, go ahead and make them. Now, they do require a fair amount of materials, but honestly not too bad, so you should be able to get your hands on these bits of kit fairly early on in the game, which is pretty nice. And you can just make however many you need to kit out an entire settlement worth of, you know defenders with Russian made weaponry which is kind of cool now let's move over to the uh, modifications we do have for all these weapons and there are a lot so we're kind of gonna breeze through them not looking quite as close as we usually do but uh, yeah because we got five guns here people we'll start with the Rex and of course the receiver category where we have a small number of different receivers but all changing firing rate damage etc as per usual we then have the barrel, which is uh, basically a short, standard, or long one. It's always nice to have. In the cylinder, this is fun because this is where you can basically change the ammo type to various types like hollow point, high velocity, but even crazy things like 12-gauge shotgun and explosive rounds. And that is very Fallout to me, so yay for that. That's fun. Now then in sights, we have a load of options, and I really love this. I'm, I'm always saddened when gun mods don't have enough sights. This has enough sights. Then and next we have the muzzle category where we have just a, you know, the pretty typical stuff, muzzle brakes, compensators, suppressors, etc. We then have a damage modifier, which uh, you guys know my usual things on this. I don't care for them, especially when they don't have any requirement, but at least instead of just going up to positive 100, they also have negative 60%. So, hey, there's some balance there, I guess. Now, then after the damage modifier, we have the underbarrel, where you can have a flashlight or laser sight, or of course nothing. Then after that, we have the material for the weapon, where we have either standard, worn, green paint, red paint, tiger stripe, or gold plate if you want to go all gaudy, and that's fun. Then after the material, we have the emissive, which basically is for like the color of your laser, uh, laser dot if you choose to have one on, where you have either green, red, yellow, or blue, and this is going to be the same on every gun, you're going to have these color options. Then, oh boy, we have the reticule, where you have the color options of either red, green, blue, yellow, or pink, as well as the texture option of how do you want your hollow sight to look? Do you want it to be a dot, a circle dot, a holographic sight, a separated circle, a normal circle, a plus, an X, a T, a large T, three dots, or triangle dots? And you have all of those in those different colors of red, green, blue, yellow, or pink. So a whole lot of modification available here. And again, this is the same for every gun, which is pretty nice. Now after that, we ha actually, that is the last one on this gun. So uh, lots of good modifications here. Let's go down to the Bison next. And uh, yeah, a lot more stuff. We have the receiver, pretty typical things. I think my favorite's the rapidly feeding mechanism because it bumps up an already fast firing rate on this weapon. Pretty nice. We then have the grips with, you know, the standard stuff, standard water comfort. Then in the ammunition, this isn't just going to choose the same stuff like hollow point or armor piercing, but also how many it gets. We got 64, 84, or 53 round capacities here, which is quite nice. Then in sights, we have, again, just a whole load of options of reflex sights, optical sights, and iron sights, always good. We then have the muzzle with uh, the pretty typical stuff here, flash hider, compensator, extender, suppressors, etc. Then the usual attachments of nothing, flashlight, 
Light or Laser. And then after that, we have the Material, where this one has different materials of Standard, Forest, Jungle, Desert, Wetlands, or Digital. And then after the material, we have the damage modifier in here again. Then in the stock, we have either a nothing, light, metal, wooden, polymer, tactical. And then we also have a material, which is for the foregrip here. And so you ha can have either gray, olive, tan, blue, red, or white for any polymer pieces. And then we have the same massive list of reticule options for you to choose from. And the same colors for the emissives. And there we go on that one. Now next is the Dragonov, where we have again the receiver category with pretty typical sorts of things. Precision modification offer offering you the most damage at 100 base damage there. Then in the barrel, we have a lot of different barrels, and you get basically the option of shortened, standard, length, extended, or integral suppressor, and then in different um, materials of either wooden or polymer, basically, for each of them. Then in the magazine, we have either 10, 14, or 6 round things, as well as your usual armor piercing options, etc. Then in the sights, we have even more sight options here, because it's not just the iron sights and reflex sights, we also have a number of telescopic optical sights from 3.5, 4x, 8x, 12x, and then night vision and thermal scopes as well. Then after that, with the muzzle, we have the pretty typical things here, compensators, muzzle brakes, suppressors, etc. And then in the underbarrel, the usual stuff, but we also get a bipod this time, rather than just the flashlight and laser sight. And then we have the stock options of standard wooden polymer, pistol grip, lightweight, or improved polymer. Then after that, we have the usual emissive color, the damage modifier, the usual gigantic list of reticules, then the material polymer again here, just so you have another color option of black, tan, olive drab, gray, woodland, or red for the polymer pieces. And then we also have a material for like the receiver up here of either the standard desert, tundra, Siberian winter, urban combat, or tiger stripes. Oh, and gold plated again here for a super gaudy weapon. Then after the dragon off, we have the Sega 12, where we have the standard receiver sorts of things in here, changing up your damage, firing rate, etc. We then in the barrels have a short, standard, modernized, a long barrels in either the polymer or woods thing here again. Then in the grips, the usual standard wooden or comfort. Then the magazines, we have a 5 up to 26 round magazine of shotgun shells for this baby. And then after that, we have again the large list of different scopes here, including some night vision and thermal here for a shotgun, which I find entertaining. Then after the sights, we have the muzzle with a uh, standard choke heavy muzzle brake suppressors for you to choose from. Then after that, we have the stock of either standard, wood, metal, or tactical. Then a fire mode. We can actually choose to have this one as either semi-automatic or automatic, which is nice. A fully automatic shotgun with, uh, say, the uh, 26 rounds. Good times. Good times on there. We have the materials of gray, olive, tan, blue, red, or white for the polymers. We then have the typical under barrel options here we've had for the other guns, the typical damage modifier. Then we have the receiver material here of standard olive, tan, blue, red, or white. And then after that, we can actually change up the ammo type here as well of either 12 gauge, 20 gauge, armor piercing, slug, dragon's breath, or frag rounds, which will offer you the highest amount of damage. Then after that, we have the usual emissive and finally the usual reticule option here. And then finally, for the Stetchkin APS, we have the receivers of, you know, again, just a loaded from receivers, upping the damage, firing rate, etc. Oh boy, the quick me mechanism to 604 fire rate. Oh my. And then with the grip, we have pistol, wire, or full stock, so you can get a lot more accuracy with these. We have the uh, magazines of 20. 40 or a 71 round drum magazine then on the sights again a load of fun reflex sight options then the muzzle the muzzle brake extender and suppressors and then the under barrel typical options here within the grip we can change the grip color from red black blue green tan or wood and then after that, the usual dam damage modifier, fire mode of semi-automatic or automatic, but I mean, come on, who? why would you want to lose the automatic on this thing? Then the material of standard, 
chrome, blue, green, yellow, red, forest camo, desert camo, UCP camo, wood paint, Soviet, and then jade. So a lot of fun options there. Then, of course, the ammo type Apollo Point Armor Piercing High Velocity 10mm 45 ACP Flechette or Explosive Rounds. And then finally, the Emissive and Reticule. So, oh my, lots of options for these guns. You can really make them whatever you desire. And it is pretty wonderful. So let's take some shots with the standard versions of these. And fire with the, uh, oh my god, why am I forgetting the name again of this Rex? There we go. And boom. So some good kick, nice, good, smooth animations on that, all customized, good sounds, good firing, a just very fun, comfortable little weapon. Let's switch over to the Bison, and aim in. This one's a little bit harder to control the recoil on, it's uh, kind of all over the place, but a fun, close-range, fully automatic SMG there, again, nice, good animation. And then the uh, Dragonov, a lovely sniper rifle, though for some reason when you build it at the chemistry station, it comes with a reflex sight rather than iron sights or a normal scope, which is a little weird. But hey, a good weapon. And again, nice smooth animation. Then let's pop in uh, the uh, Sega next. Who doesn't love a big ol' shotgun? Quite a bit of kick on this, but kind of comparable, surprisingly, to the Rex in uh, its uh, kick. But overall, another just good weapon with a good fast firing rate here for a shotgun. And finally, let's go to the Stetchkin APS with, uh, oh yeah, this glorious firing rate. Oh yeah, that's wonderful. With the standard 20 round magazine on this, it's just... Oh boy, it's all over the place, but it is quite entertaining. Now let's uh, actually just go ahead and drop all the standard ones here and replace them with all of my modified versions. And let's go have a little fun with our usual subjects of Randy and Will. And we will, I think, take out Will with the Rex. As this is an explosive revolver now with a very gaudy color to it, but uh... Overall, good time, so, whoop, 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 there we go, let's click that. I think I'm getting the cement behind it. Hold on, hold on, let's try it again. There we are, and resurrect. Sorry, Will, but it has to be done. Ooh, half his uh, damage, or half his health, rather, in just two shots. Now let's uh, grab the bison, and I'm not going to use this one for Randy the Radstag. Let's just get it some good shots here with, of course, a nice suppressor attached. And a whole lot of bullets. A whole lot of bullets in that magazine. That is just beautiful. The 84 round one is the one I went with. Not the most powerful of the options, but fun. Then, of course, we have the uh, Spetnaz here. This is the a night with the night vision scope on the Straganov with the explosive rounds. I mean, how can you not love that? It's just gorgeous. I mean, really, this is a... This is, I think, my new favorite sniper rifle. It's just that, that great. Then, of course, we have the... Let's actually do the APK or APB next, because we'll take out uh, Randy with the Sega. And, yeah, I've got the one of the sort of more rifle stocks on this with a silencer and a 71-round drum magazine, and, well, it fires quick. Oh, and, of course, I did go with the explosive rounds, because why would you not want an explosive firing automatic pistol with a drum magazine of 71 rounds. It's just gorgeous. I really do love that. It is pretty wonderful. And uh, dealing 267 uh, damage with those, each of those explosive shots. But this, the 248 damage on the Sega 12K. There we are. Let's take out Randy the Rad Stag with this one. I'm so sorry, Randy, but it has to be done. You must be taken out with our automatic shotgun, and you're clipping through the door? Let me help you there. Oh, nope, you are. You are stuck. Well, bye-bye. Yep, he's gone. Okay, let's hopefully we can get through the door now. 
Excellent. I'm so sorry, Randy. That was a bit of overkill, but a beautiful automatic shotgun. I think this one's probably my favorite gun in the pack because, well, it does look like an older weapon, and I do enjoy the older weapons in the game, and it's an automatic shotgun. How could you not just love having that? But that is it for this lovely mod pack, my friends. It's a pretty fun one. Some of the things, like I said, are a bit more moderny than I care for. But all in all, it's a great little set of weapons and even a bit of armor for you to enjoy. So take a look at the link in the description if you'd like to have a look at it for yourself, which I recommend you do. But that's going to be it for today. Hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one!